Hello everyone, my name is Cheyenne and in this video I'm going to be showing you some foods that I've been eating during my days. Lately I've been pretty much eating the same thing every day so it would have been a little redundant to do a whole what I eat in a week but I figured doing just what I eat in a day would also give you a chance to see my latest workout routine and also it allowed me to fit in a little review of the Always Pan from our place. So yeah, that being said, I hope you enjoy. Seem like your body don't know how to hold you. So lately I've been trying extra hard to not only wake up before 9 a.m. but make sure I have like at least two large jars like this of water before I even drink breakfast. I find that it really just, I don't know, prepares my digestive system for whatever I'm about to throw at it. And also hydration is key. So <laughs> that always comes first. Next, I usually just take whatever fruits I have in my fridge and dice them up to put on top of a protein, yogurt, and granola bowl. This is the only way that I know how to cut kiwi but I feel like it wastes a lot of the kiwi meat um, in taking off the skin so if you guys know any better ways I could probably use a peeler or something definitely let me know in the comments next I just take my favorite blueberry coconut yogurt from so delicious add a splash of almond milk to make it a little more liquidy um, and then I add in about a scoop of this unsweetened protein powder lately I've been going to the gym like three to five times a week and three of those days are always days where I lift weights so I really want to make sure that I have the protein necessary to help build that muscle that's one of my like physique goals right now I guess <laughs> is to put on some muscle and yeah in order to do that I need protein and I'm gonna shut up about it now because sometimes people in the comments get a little annoyed at how much I talk about protein but <laughs> anyways you can see here I just topped my yogurt with some kind almond butter granola the fruits that I diced up a drizzle of raw local honey some chia seeds Seeds, coconut flakes and hemp seeds and yeah this has been one of my favorite breakfasts lately not only is it delicious but it keeps me satiated for a really long time which is super helpful when I need to go to the gym and then usually have some meetings or do schoolwork afterwards it just helps a ton oh here I am adding a sprinkle of oh my gosh what is that cereal called honey bunches of oats yeah <laughs> my roommate has it and I don't know I sprinkle it on top sometimes because it just adds the best little extra bit of crunch but yeah once that's done, about an hour later in the day, I usually start having a little bit of a hankering for caffeine. I don't really drink coffee anymore because it's a little too intense for my system to handle, I guess. So I make myself a little iced matcha latte, again with almond milk. I haven't been able to find oat milk lately at my grocery store. I don't know if that's like a problem everyone's having, but yeah, oat milk is usually my favorite, but almond milk has been the go-to these days for that reason alone. Okay everyone, so I just had breakfast and now I am dressed to go to the gym. I wanted to give you all a quick OOTD because lately I've been trying to step out of my comfort zone with the outfits that I wear to the gym and, you know, rather than the typical black leggings, black t-shirt, wear some bright colors, maybe something a little more form-fitting than I would normally be comfortable with, and stuff that, you know, shows the cellulite because it's a normal part of the human body and we need to stop being afraid of these things. So this is me doing a small step towards conquering that fear. My shorts are from Aritzia. I believe they're the TNA life kind. They're really, really comfortable. Once I discovered them and figured out how well they fit, I literally got them in every color. And then my top is from Piper and Scoot. What's really nice about this one is that it actually comes with like a double under bra layer, I guess. So it's like a tank top and a sports bra in one. It's really nice. And yeah, this is literally my first time wearing a tank top to the gym. So eee, wish me luck. <laughs> oh, and of course, we have my trusty fanny pack because although I know it probably gives off massive grandma vibes, it's just the most convenient way to keep my phone, my AirPods, my keys on my person while I'm lifting. Also because I don't feel like going out and buying a lock and keeping a locker. So this is just the solution for now. Got my all black chucks. And yeah, let's head on out. Actually, because it's cold outside, I'm just gonna put on this sweatshirt from high school. Yes, my high school's name was Riverdale. I get so many comments about that which is really funny, but the show didn't exist when I went there, luckily. I feel bad for all the kids who go there now. <laughs> Tell me what you do on a Sunday I Okay, so the second I pull into the gym parking lot, y'all already know I got a double mask up. Double masking is honestly the safest way to protect yourself and others from the 
right now so i just want to put that out there i feel pretty comfortable in this gym because it's massive they have lots of social distancing protocol and they have these big ginormous fans that are always on so the air do be circulating but anyways after warming up for about 10 minutes on the bike i go ahead and do some dynamic stretching to make sure i don't hurt myself by the way the workout plan that i'm currently following is stephanie buttermore's at home like body weights intermediate I think program but obviously luckily I was able to have access to a gym more recently so I've just been doing it there and it's nice because they do have much heavier weights than I do at home after doing a few kettlebell squats I go downstairs and do some tricep extensions they're one arm they're much harder than they look actually forgive my form please during the <laughs> deadlift oh my gosh I usually do it with a barbell but they didn't have a 70 pound one so I just did two 35 pound dumbbells and clearly my back sucked so yeah, after doing a few bicep curls, I finished off the workout with a few sets of bicycle runners. Is that what they're called? Bicycle kicks? I like Stephanie's workouts because afterwards I am tired, but I'm not like dead, you know? That's kind of the vibe I'm going for right now. Now I'm done, booty popping, time to go home. <laughs> Okay, so now it is time for lunch. Lately, I've been making a sweet potato hash that I've really been loving. It's like home fries basically, but with sweet potatoes. So I guess sweet potato home fries is what you could call them. I will link the recipe that I follow down below. I don't have all the ingredients that it lists, so I kind of just do whatever I have in my cabinet loosely based on this recipe, but they come out tasting so crisp and delicious and succulent. I don't even know how to explain it. The surprise ingredient here is cinnamon. So you do have a little bit of spice from the chili powder, but the cinnamon really, I don't know that juxtaposition really brings it up a notch so yeah after laying that out on a baking sheet i just pop it in the oven for about 20 to 25 minutes at 400 degrees fahrenheit and then once those are done i'm gonna go ahead and shift my attention to the veg saute i guess that i like to put on top for this i just start out with a base of chopped white onion and chopped portobello mushrooms i also rinse some dino kale to chop up as well um, frozen kale or frozen spinach works great too. Honestly, any greens or any quick cooking veggies you have in your fridge will work perfectly for this. I also do want to mention that between the yogurt bowl and this hash, like I really have been eating it every day and I actually often alternate like which one I have first because they both work as like, well actually, do people have yogurt for lunch? I don't know, but they're both like really filling delicious meals and sometimes I'm in the mood for something savory. So I have the hash in the morning and you know, I try to honor my palate in that way. Into the veggies also went some smoky maple bacon tempeh from Tofurky. This is one of my favorite tempehs that they have. I also often have the sesame garlic one. They're just marinated to perfection and add the perfect amount of flavor to what would otherwise be a bit of a bland veggie dish. I actually made the sweet potatoes earlier that morning so I'm gonna go ahead and reheat them in the microwave before serving them with my veggie hash. And then y'all, here's the kicker. I'm gonna put a fried egg on top of my lunch. This is the Miyoko's Vegan Butter, by the way. Really great product. If you are super shocked and don't know why the hell I am eating an egg, I'll link my previous video down below. It's basically explaining my thought process and all the reasons why I have started eating eggs again. This one is ethically sourced from a community farm nearby. Basically, I started having cravings for eggs and denying myself of them started triggering my ED and it was a really bad cycle. So in order to put my mental health first, I am having eggs now from time to time that are locally and ethically sourced. Um, so yeah, I guess that's the update. Please be nice in the comments. I already am dealing with a lot of heavy feelings about this recent change, but I figured it was most important to be transparent with y'all. My goal as it stands is still to be 100% vegan again in the future, but for now, I hope you guys can respect where I'm at. Thank you. Okay, hi everyone. Um, I'm between meals right now, and I thought I would sit down really quick and review for you all my Always Pan from Our Place. I don't know the specific name of the color I got, but it's like this terracotta pink one. But yeah, this is her. This is how big she is, head for scale. I got this pan for my birthday as a gift to myself because I just could not stop seeing it all over Instagram and the ads. You guys, they wore me down. What can I say? I'm a weak 
sold. I also got a couple requests from you guys to review it because the price is quite steep for a non-stick pan. So I figured, of course, if people are gonna spend their money on something like this, they probably wanna know if it's worth it. Honestly, that's probably something that I should have done before purchasing it. I didn't do much research and I just kind of went into it without much foresight. Those darn Google ads, yeah, they really got me. But anyways, I'll do quick pros and cons. The pros, I mean, I don't really have anything that horrible to say about it. It is a non-stick pan, so when you're cooking, things glide really easily. They don't get stuck. One pro of that is you don't have to use as much oil if that's something that you like to be conservative with. For me, I appreciate not having to use as much oil because sometimes when you're cooking with oil, things just get too sticky and I don't know, if you're not paying attention, things can overcook and then it becomes much harder to clean the pan. So I really appreciate that feature. That leads into the second pro, which is that it's so freaking easy easy to clean. My roommate and I joke all the time that it's called the always pan because it's just always on the stove because I'll make one thing and then I'll just wipe it down with a paper towel or a cloth and then I'll use it throughout the day and I only really scrub it at the end of the day and I get it ready for the next day. So that's definitely a big advantage. However, another reason why it's always on the stove is because it's quite large and hefty so we don't exactly have that much storage for it along with our other pan. So I guess that could be considered a con. It's gonna take up a lot of space wherever you put it. Another thing that's nice about this is that it's sturdy, I guess. So I know some people can be concerned with knocking pans over on the stove or if the handle gets caught on your clothing, that could be a potentially really unsafe situation. So this is a product that definitely won't budge. I also like that it has this handle here. I guess it is because it is so heavy. It's like very difficult to carry just with one, but having this one is really nice. Also, this isn't really a pro or a con. I guess it could be either depending on your situation, but I will mention that this pan retains heat super well. So you have to be really careful to not burn yourself and not touch the actual body of the pan. I think more so than with other cooking appliances. I don't know if it's the material or the ceramic or what, it retains heat so well and it really stays hot for a really long time. So you really have to let it cool before you go clean it. And also when you're cooking, I think you have to be extra conservative with how much heat or flame you're using because once it gets hot, it will stay hot. Now for the biggest cons. Um, number one is obviously the price. I think this retails for about $145, $146. You could definitely find much cheaper non-stick pans on the market right now. I think the reason why it's so expensive is because it's sustainably made, you know, in the US, which is something that's hard to find. It's all kinds of products. So I personally didn't mind paying that price, but obviously if you're on a budget, there are better options for you out there. Um, I'll link a few down below that I found online to make that process easier for you if you're looking for something like this but don't really want to break the bank. Another con is that it scratches pretty easily. I've had this for about a month now or two even. Oh my gosh, time really doesn't exist during COVID. Um, <laughs> but I was making some tofu scramble and I mindlessly went to reach for a fork to smash my tofu. Totally immediately regretted it because now I have these little black, I don't even know if you can see them on camera, but there's some here and down there, black scratch marks basically. And on Honestly, the biggest reason I was annoyed about that is because for something that, that's so pricey, maybe I would expect some more durability. But it also sucks because like I think these kinds of pans get scratched up often, whether it's someone who doesn't know not to use metal, uses them, and that's how it happens, or you forget like I did. That kind of makes me want to not spend as much money on it because obviously if it gets too scratched up, then it's gonna be a problem and you're just gonna have to replace it. So that's something that's been not so great about it. But as long as I remember to use the wooden spoon that came with it or I have some other wooden spoons, everything goes smoothly. I'll also mention that the pan comes with a little steamer contraption thingy. I'll put a clip over here so you can see what it looks like. I actually haven't used it yet just because I guess I don't steam many things and if I do, I just do it in the pan with water. Probably would have been a good idea to try that feature out before doing this review. But I mean, it's informal, you guys won't care. I will definitely see if I can use that feature in the future and I will let you know how it goes. I would imagine it's a pretty convenient thing to have, you know, makes it all multi-purpose, but yeah. I don't want to ramble too long. I just wanted to give you my quick thoughts on this product. Overall, I'd probably rate it an 8 out of 10. I mean, like, it's really pretty. Like, I'll give it that. Design-wise, it's something that I would love to have in my kitchen wherever I am. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you guys at dinner.
Toodles. Okay, we have made it to dinner time. This night I decided to make some chickpea spaghetti noodles with marinara sauce and this Dr. Prager's burger. First, however, I started up by chopping up some broccoli stems that I had in my fridge. A lot of people don't know what to do with broccoli stems. You can really add them to anything. They're a little more bitter than the head of the broccoli itself, so you'll probably want to make sure it's got a nice sauce to mellow into, but I find that it's just a great way to reduce food waste to include them into whatever recipe I possibly can. So yeah, after putting my chickpea noodles in some boiling water, I went ahead and mashed up my Dr. Prager's burger, added some olive oil, garlic powder, and onion powder. As for the taste of the Dr. Prager's veggie burger, I would say it's most comparable to how I remember like ground turkey tasting. It's more light and I don't know, I honestly really enjoy it. After adding in a cup or so of the marinara sauce, I decided to pull in audible and actually add some plain unsweetened coconut yogurt to my sauce which actually made it a little bit more of a bolognese it actually tasted really good super creamy i highly recommend you try it out and then i added in some frozen kale just for good measure this sauce came out tasting a lot better than i thought i could have definitely let the broccoli stems soften up a little more but they were honestly a nice addition made the sauce a little more earthy and of course you gotta top it with some nutritional yeast full disclosure i served myself the rest of the helping of sauce after i took some pictures and did that one initial shot because i waited so long to eat honestly i was just really hungry so i was like i'm just gonna have the whole thing of sauce and it was really delicious and really really worth it so that's gonna be pretty much it for today i hope you all enjoyed this video please comment down below what videos you'd like to see next and i'll see you in my next one eat well and be happy